Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. Today's lecture is about gradient descent, which is a popular optimization algorithm in machine learning and data science. This video requires a basic understanding of derivatives. To put it simply, the derivative tells us the rate of change of a function. So if I give you a function that always equals to, let's say, 2 or 5, then the derivative is 0 because the function doesn't change. And if you have a function f of x equals x squared, then the derivative with respect to x is 2 times x because it's a polynomial uh, function. Having that in mind, so now let's look at a very simple problem. We want to find the value of uh, theta. We can call this anything we want, but here I use theta for which this function of theta, f of theta equals theta minus one squared, uh, reaches its minimum value. So one way to solve this problem is to uh, plot this function. For example, use different values on this uh, sort of like blue uh, curve and plot the function. And we can see that at theta equals one, this function reaches its minimum value. But you have seen in calculus one that we can actually look at the derivative of this function, right? So if we take the derivative, uh, which we show here by f prime of theta or df over d theta, uh, this would be two times theta minus one. And if we set this equal to zero to find critical points, you can see that the derivative is zero uh, at theta equals uh, one. And the derivative tells us also the slope of the tangent line, right? So this is the tangent line that we have, and you can see that the slope of the tangent line is zero. And in this simple case, we can see that this is the minimum uh, value. But now let's make an assumption, and let's say we cannot solve this equation uh, when the derivative is equal to zero. So in this case, uh, what we need to do is that, let's say we start at this red point, and what we are trying to answer here at this time is that should I go to right or the positive side or to the left or negative side to decrease the value of this function, right? So if I go towards right, then I end up here and this value, now the value of the function at this point is greater than the value at point B. But if I go towards uh, the negative side or left, I will decrease the value of the function. So that's the right move here. So how can we understand this? Another way to look at this is that by looking at uh, the sign of the derivative, right? So the slope of the tangent line uh, here is uh, sort of like the positive. So because the derivative is positive, means that now we have to go towards the negative side. So let's say now we are on the other side. We start at this point. Should I go towards the uh, plus side or the right side? or um, left or negative side. So you can see that in this case, the derivative here, the slope of the tangent line is negative, And we have to go towards the opposite of that because the function is at this point uh, decreasing. So if we come towards right, right, we get to this point and the value of the function has decreased, right? So here we basically right now know what gradient descent is. So I can show you in this case, that um, gradient descent, the, the basic idea is that we're going to start at some point as some random or initial value, let's say, for example, here. And then we take these sort of like steps to get closer and closer to the sort of like minimum value. It is not guaranteed to, to get um, exactly to this point that is the minimum value, but that's the idea that what you get if you choose these parameters that I'm going to talk about it uh, very, uh, very briefly. Uh, if you choose those correctly, you will get close to the minimum value and you have a good solution. So let's look at first the mathematical expression for the update formula. So that's what we have here, that we have a current solution, that's this theta. And then you need to have a step size or a learning rate, which is alpha. So this tells you how big each step is. And because we are going towards the opposite of the derivative, that's why we have a negative sign here. And then we multiply this by the derivative of this uh, function at the point theta. And then this gives us the next value for this theta. And we can, we can continue this as many times as we want. And right now we basically have everything we need for gradient descent, except the fact that 
uh, we need to answer this question. What if we have two or more variables? Because then we cannot uh, technically define derivative, right? So that's the thing that we're going to address in the next slide. So let's define first an optimization problem with two variables. Let's say that uh, we want to analyze a list of countries and see if there is any uh, correlation between GDP per capita and life satisfaction, right? So the, you can think of this as the input and you can think of life, life satisfaction as the output. And one simple way to analyze this model is using a sort of like a, the, the line of best fit, right? So you have this line that has this equation of theta zero plus theta one X. Theta zero is the intercept, theta one is the slope. And after we find the optimal values for these two, the nice thing is that if theta one is positive, this means that these two uh, sort of like quantities that we are like trying to understand are positively correlated with each other, meaning that higher GDP means higher life satisfaction. And in this case, we have all these countries that you can see with these scatter plots here. So we, the first thing we need to do is to define a cost function to measure the amount of error, right? So yi's are the actual uh, sort of like uh, values that we have for life satisfaction. And this h of xi look like uh, here, they sort of like, they are the uh, predicted values, right? So what this does, uh, I can show you here on this figure, measures this sort of like distance here for each point and sort of like, uh, take it to the power of two and then taking the average. That's why we have one over N sum of these sort of like distances. And if I plug in what the predicted value is using the equation of this line, it is negative theta zero plus theta one XI. And that's why we get YI minus theta zero minus theta one XI. So this is the now the function that we want to minimize. And the point here is that we have two uh, variables, right? So uh, we want to see how we can use the technique that we just talked about. It. So in this case, we need to find something great uh, called gradient. So what is gradient? Gradient is the generalization of the derivative to functions of several variables. So if you have a function that has two or more variables like this one here, then you have to define something called gradient. And we show this uh, using this notation. And if you look at it, now we have what we call as partial derivatives, right? So the, now instead of using df over d theta zero, we use this notation. So this is the partial derivative with respect to theta zero, partial derivative with respect to theta one. And if you don't know partial derivative, it's totally fine. I can show you that it's very, very similar to the derivative, the way that you learn in calculus one. So what is the partial derivative of this function with respect to theta zero? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna call everything inside this parentheses EI to just make it a little bit simpler. So then the cost function or the objective function would be one over N summation from one to N of EI squared. And the EI is equal to this term, right? And now what we can use is chain rule that you have seen in uh, calculus one. So the idea is that if you wanna take the derivative of a complex function, you can use chain rule to start from the outer function and then go uh, sort of like towards the inner functions here. Like here, for example, EI is the inner function. And then uh, the whole like summation of EI squared is the outer function. And um, so if you look at it here, we can write this as the partial derivative of F with respect to EI and EI with respect to theta zero. And one thing that's important is that when you take the partial derivative, the reason I'm saying it's very simple to the regular derivative is because you assume everything else is constant, right? So in this case, uh, first we have to take the derivative with respect to EI, and that's because we have EI squared, that will be two times EI, and that's what we have here. So one over N summation of two EIs. And then for taking the derivative of EI with respect to theta zero, remember all these things are constant. So everything except for theta zero is uh, constant. And the only thing that is now changing is this term. And think of this, what is the derivative of negative x with respect to x is negative one. And what is the derivative of negative theta zero with respect to theta zero is negative one. And now we can also include this negative one uh, or absorb it into EI 
And so that's what we get here for the partial derivative respect to theta zero is two or n summation from one to n theta zero plus theta one x i minus y i. And we calculated the first term. Now in the next slide, we calculate um, this term, the, the term for the partial derivative respect to theta one. So let's take a look at this. So uh, now we want to find this quantity. Uh, we have very much similar to before. We have this function, which is one over n summation of ei squared. And then we have the definition of ei. Now we want to take the partial derivative respect to theta one. We can write this as partial derivative of f respect to ei and ei respect to theta one. The nice thing is that the first term, we can actually recycle this because that's exactly what we had in the previous slide. And now we have to take the partial derivative of ei with respect to theta one. So remember now everything else is constant. So all these terms are constant. And when we take the derivative, we get zero. And now you have here negative xi times theta one. And if you take the partial derivative with respect to theta one, we get this constant uh, next to it, right? So that's what we have here. And this would be two or n summation from one to n of this term times x i. And so in this case, we found the whole uh, gradient, right? We found the two partial derivatives. And remember, because gradient shows the sensitivity of the function with respect to all the variables, here we have two variables, and that's why gradient is two by one, so a vector of length two. If we had five variables, gradient would be five by one. So now let's recap the main points, right? So the goal was to find the minimum value of this function with respect to theta zero and theta one. The first step is to find the gradient. So that's the only really like big thing you need for gradients and finding the gradient. And then you start with some current value or uh, some random value. You use your learning rate or step size and you multiply this by the gradient and this will give you the new update or the next point. And now you can repeat this as many times as you want. So you have to use something called number of uh, iterations. So in the next slide, let's look at a very simple implementation of this, right? So in this case, if you remember, we had 100 points, right? So that's why here I set the number of data points to 100. Now for gradient descent, we have two important parameters. How many times you want to do these updates here is 10. Alpha is the learning rate or step size, which I set it equal to 0 0.1. Remember this because we need it in the next slide. Then we are going to use NumPy, which is a uh, popular library in, in, in Python for working with arrays of numbers. Uh, We're going to initialize this vector theta, the vector of uh, sort of like the parameters by uh, some random numbers. So all these, uh, these two theta zero and theta one, they are between zero and one and randomly initialized. And the main point, which is about the gradient descent is here, right? So we write a for loop for iteration in range of the number of iterations. So here means that for 10 times, we repeat this process. We find um, the gradient or the here, it's better to say the partial derivative with respect to theta zero, which is what we have here and we implement this here. And then we have the second term, which is the partial derivative with respect to theta one. And then we put them together and uh, this gives us the gradient, which is a vector of two by one, right? So think about right now, exactly as what we had before. If we have theta zero and theta one, and then we update this as theta zero, theta one minus alpha. Uh, and then we have the sort of like the gradient of F uh, which is what exactly we, we, we calculated here. And we repeat this process at the end after 10 times, we get the solution here. And that's what you can see that these are the solutions that we found. And obviously this line has a positive slope. So it means that yes, there's actually a positive correlation between GDP and life satisfaction. So we solve this problem using uh, using uh, gradient descent. Obviously, you can use linear scores method or other things, but here the point was that to show you how gradient descent works. Now let's look at the impact of the learning rate and the number of iterations. This is the value that we had in the previous slide. Let's divide this by 10. Let's divide this out of 10 by 10. What happens in these two cases? We don't find a good fit, right? You can see that this line 
that we find is not even close to those scatter points. So this means that if we fix the number of iterations equals to 10, and these two values of alpha on the left, it takes too long for gradient descent to get close to the solution. How can we fix this? I pause for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, you're right. You need to increase the number of iterations, right? So if I get this uh, sort of like alpha equals 0 0.001 and do this for 10 iterations, this gradient descent, you can see that we are far from the uh, being close to these data points. But when we increase the number of iterations to 1,000, now we are getting very sort of like close uh, to the uh, best line of feed that we found um, here. So you need to adjust the learning rate and number of iterations together so that if the learning rate is too small, then you have to have more number of uh, iterations or increase the number of iterations to get to the uh, optimal solution. Thank you for uh, watching this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Dr. Data Science.